Welcome back. At this point, we are essentially done upgrading from .NET Framework to .NET 7. We've taken our ASP.NET eShop sample and gotten it working on ASP.NET Core, on .NET 7, and deployed into Azure. I hope this has been educational. If you remember when we started, we had this slide showing the steps we were going to go through. We started by preparing for the upgrade by using tools like the .NET Upgrade Planner and .NET Upgrade Assistant to understand the NuGet packages and .NET APIs we depended on. We talked about how we chose our target framework we were going to move to, whether that was .NET 7 or for some of the class libraries, .NET Standard. And we, and we planned out how we were going to approach um, which order we were upgrading our solution projects in. From there, we used the tooling to upgrade our projects to the new SDK style format, and we updated the NuGet package references to use the new package reference format and to target versions that would work with our new updated .NET targets. We use tools like the .NET Upgrade Assistant and the incremental tooling in the Visual Studio Upgrade Assistant extension that allowed us to take our existing project and move that code forward to target .NET 7. We looked at how that incremental version of the Upgrade Assistant tooling in Visual Studio allowed us to take one controller at a time, move it over to the new project, and then deploy them side by side with a proxy between the apps so that from the user's perspective, everything was unchanged. But on the back end, we were slowly moving towards our goal of running on .NET 7. And then we tested it out by launching it, uh, using everything manually. We didn't go through any unit or integration testing, which is something you would want to do as part of this process, but was out of scope for these videos. But we did ultimately deploy the uh, incrementally migrated solution into Azure with both the original ASP.NET and the new ASP.NET Core projects side by side. Uh, we have here, if I, if I switch windows, you can see we do have our final project here now running, and we haven't migrated every endpoint. If I go to the session endpoint, for example, behind the scenes, this is still served by our ASP.NET app, but we showed how you can begin this process and use tools like the system web adapters to make all of these endpoints work, uh, both uh, on the ASP.NET and ASP.NET Core apps. Going forward, all that would be left for the, this solution would be to repeat the process for the last couple controllers that we haven't migrated yet, and they would come over pretty easily. And then at that point, we would move authentication to happen in the ASP.NET Core app instead of in the ASP.NET app. And we would be able to uh, turn off and uh, disable the original ASP.NET app, and we would be completely migrated. If you do want to follow along with any of this, I. Uh, I think we'll have it mentioned in the descriptions for these videos, but this code that I've been working with is available on GitHub. You go out to github.com slash mjrusos upgrade sample, and you can get both the original uh, version of the solution as well as an upgraded one. And in the incremental folder, we have different snapshots of the solution for different portions of these videos so that you can see which uh, state of the app corresponds to different videos as you're going through them. So, uh, at this point, we're done with our end-to-end -end upgrade of the uh, ASP.NET sample we were working on, but there are still a couple other topics that would be great to cover that weren't uh, really part of that particular workflow. So after this wrap-up, we're going to have a couple of bonus videos. First, we're going to have Simona, an intern from the .NET team, come share work she did to enable the upgrade assistant to support migrating from WCF to core WCF. In the sample we used for this series of videos, we got to look at class libraries, we got to look at ASP.NET MVC applications, but we didn't have any WCF dependencies. So Simona will walk us through how we can upgrade from WCF to core WCF to move forward with our server-side WCF dependencies on .NET 7, and she'll show us some great work she did in the Upgrade Assistant tool to automate some of that. Also, we got a taste of the system web adapters when we used them so that we could have a class library with system.web dependencies targeting .NET standard, and so that we could have shared session state and shared authentication in our incremental web upgrade scenario. But there's a lot more to the system web adapters I'd love to be able to get into. So we're gonna have Taylor Southwick from my team come and share a deeper dive into the system web adapters. So. Uh, this wraps up the end-to-end uh, -end walkthrough. I hope that it was useful. I hope that you feel more confident approaching your own .NET upgrades now. And I hope that you come back and join us for those bonus videos to get a little deeper into some other topics uh, related to this one. 
Uh, I appreciate you watching all of this. I know it's a, a long process, but um, I just, you know, uh, hope that it was useful and that you can all go off and upgrade your own apps to .NET 7. Uh, best of luck and see you in the bonus videos.